Praise God, praise God. It came, but the Bible says it came to pass. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's not here forever. Though while you're in it, it seems like it was forever. Yes. But thank Amen. God, thank God there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. And we're walking into that light. Praise God. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for morning by morning new mercies oh, yeah. we yeah. see. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. We thank God for uh, today. Uh, we enter into daylight savings time and we're supposed to spring forward mm. and some opted to continue laying on their springs. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for those of you uh, that made it out today. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. 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 We're going to be coming from Joshua chapter 1, and as you're finding that in your Bibles or your apps, we are, we'll have a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've made. God, we're blessed to be in it. We're blessed to see it. Another opportunity to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge, oh God, and bring about your will in the earth. God, we thank you, oh God, for choosing us. Now, God, I pray that you help us to be faithful in the job that you have given to us. God, I pray that you help us not to be distracted by the things of this world. God, even now, I pray that you help us to focus our mind in on what you're saying to us today. Give us ears to hear, that we might hear everything that you have for us. God, I pray that you just till the soil of our hearts, that we might be receptive uh, to the seed that you're sowing today, and that it would be productive in our lives and spring forth and bring forth fruit. God, I pray a blessing upon everyone here in the tabernacle today, those that couldn't make it out for whatever reason, and those mm -hmm. who are watching this later on, we pray a blessing to every individual, every family, uh, every household, every ministry in the name of Jesus. We bless you yes. in Jesus' name. We ask amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the God. Lord. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. Today, if I were to take a title, amen. Uh, let's see, let me get my notes out. Uh, if I were to take a title, I would say marching orders. These are our marching orders. Marching orders. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, beginning at the very first verse. And it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all this people, to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give you, or I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down of the sun, Amen. shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not Amen. leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people he shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And let's go on down to the ninth verse. Uh, let's see. Chapter 1, verse. Okay. Yeah, I didn't print it out. I have to look it up. Yeah, uh, Verse number seven, it says, Only be strong and very courageous that, that, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I Have I not commanded you? 
Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Praise the Lord. Marching orders. Uh, God has given us marching orders time and again, uh, and we see the word of God is with the children of Israel right from the time they went into Egypt all through the, the slavery years and then God commanded Moses to go and free the slaves, and now they've wandered through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, uh, God had promised them a promised land, and, and that was their purpose initially to go, uh, to get into the promised land. God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. It was sounded so great and so desirable, so much better than living in slavery. But here, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and most of the people at that time had only known the wilderness. They didn't even know slavery. Uh, and, and so they got, kind of got accustomed to that. Uh, some may have uh, grown accustomed to just wandering and being a nomadic people, uh, not having a land to call their own. And so here they are somewhat of a dilemma. Moses has just died. Now what do we do? A lot of people say that Joshua was second in command, but in reality, Joshua was just the general of the army. Mm -hmm. He was the general of the people of God. And, and so here they are, they have a general, and they're wondering what to do. And some are saying, you know, shall we, what, you know, what, what? And so God speaks to Joshua, and Joshua says, look, Moses is dead. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming back. His assignment is completed. You know, sometimes we uh, keep wondering or looking back to the glory days, mm -hmm. looking back to that great man or that great woman of God that, that, that we followed uh, so and celebrated and all the signs and the wonders and the mighty things that God has done through them. And I can imagine some of the children of Israel are you're like, all hope is gone now the the great man of God has gone on what do we do there you know shall we some are even probably thinking shall we kill ourselves and, and join him wherever he is and I'm sure that others said you know what let's just give up that that far-fetched hope that dream that seems so impossible for 40 years we've heard about this promised land it hasn't come to pass but we've been able we've learned how to survive in the desert in the wilderness, let's just settle here. In fact, some settled on the, uh, what was it, the west side, or was it the east side of, of the river, and didn't ever cross over into the promised land. God says, forget about all that. I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Stop waiting for the next great, great one to step up into the void. He said, Joshua, you're it. You're it now. Even maybe Joshua maybe even said, okay, I, I, I'm the substitute. I'm the one that's just supposed to fill in the gap until the real person comes along. I, I felt that way myself, you know. Uh, I'm expecting some great man or woman of God to come and, and, and take over the Bible school and take over the, the teaching and take over this and take over that. And I'll be right there, number two, right by their side to cheer them on and encourage them and to lift up their hands when they're praying. But God is saying to Joshua, Joshua, it's on you now. Jesus. Moses carried the burden and the, the, the promise as long as he was supposed to carry. Now it's up to you to finish out the process. And I say to you, people of God, now it's on you. Praise Stop you. looking for someone else to do it, someone else to come along, someone else to pray you through, someone else to fast for you, someone else to anoint you, someone else to prophesy over you, someone else to dream a dream for you, someone else to interpret your dream. God said it's on you now. It's time to grow up, and you have a face-to-face -face communion with me. It's time for you to hear from me and know my voice. It's time for you to obey the instructions that I've given to you. It's, it's time out for someone else to do the, the heavy lifting for you. God said, I'm giving you the marching orders. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Then verses 3 and 4. God and Joshua, God and Abraham, God and Moses... Uh, said, I've promised you a certain land oh, yeah. everywhere that the soles of your feet shall trod. Yeah. 
You know, as I was reading this, I was thinking, I said, you know what? I went out and prayer walked with this thought in mind from this scripture, from this promise that God made to Abraham. God didn't just make it to the children of Israel just then and just now. He made it way back hundreds of years before to Abraham that I'm going to give you this huge territory. And he lays it out. He spells it right out there in, in verse 4. He said, from, uh, you know, what's verse 4 say? From this wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. That was a huge territory. Yeah. If you were to look on a map, that goes from the uh, Mediterranean Sea through all of Jordan, mm -hmm. on the land that we know is Israel today, but not only Israel, but all of Jordan, mm -hmm. and all of Iran, mm -hmm. down into the the the, the uh, peninsula, I forget the name of Iran, and, and right up, to butting up against Egypt, a huge territory. It's about four or five times the, the, the size of Israel today that God had promised them. God had made a great promise, and I thought about how, with this thought in mind, God mapped out what God had promised, and, and many of you, God has promised you great things. You've never seen the fulfillment of all that you feel that God has promised you. Sometimes you just got down in the Lodi bar and you got out the word of God and a scripture jumps out and said, God, wow, that promise is for me. And that promise alone was enough to sustain you for that day, to keep you going. It said, because I have a promise from God. Right. And that's what kept the children of Israel marching through the wilderness. They had a promise from God. Yes. But now there's some devastating news. Moses is not there. So God is saying, you're the one. You're the one. And then he reminds them how they mapped out this land. And I, I'm, I'm trying to get to this. Uh, but I'm thinking about this as I'm doing my prayer walk. And I, you know the story how I prayer walked my house and my block. And then I felt like after three years, God told me, okay, now it's time to prayer walk the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, do you want me to walk from here to the... Two blocks over, two blocks in every direction. No, I want you to walk the entire perimeter of the city of Philadelphia. I said, I don't know if I can do that. So, but I said, I'll, I'll see what it entails. I got a, bought a huge map to, of the city of Philadelphia and I mapped it out the whole perimeter. I said, God, that's 52 miles. You know, I have to think about driving that far, much less walking that far. I said, no, that's what I want you to, I want you to prayer walk. I had never heard of anyone doing such a seemingly crazy thing. And uh, from the Bucks County wilderness and this great Lebanon PA, as far as the great river, the river Delaware, and all the lands of the Delawareans, and to the great sea of suburbia toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory, the Lord said. Jesus. So it took us about a year to get it done, a, a little, a mile here, a mile there, and we got around the city of Philadelphia. And so did the children of Israel. They walked out the land. Abraham walked out the land. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's easier said than done. Because if you read Joshua, it says, it's the land that I have given you. You haven't been there for 400 years. Other people think it's their land. They've been living there all their lives. Their children have lived there all their lives. Their grandchildren have lived there all their lives. But God said, it's your land. God, they have a different opinion. They think it's their land. But God said, no, I've already given it to you. I promised it to Abraham. Go take it. You know, it's like uh, when I, I, I think about the story of Moses and, and God comes to Moses. God, uh, Moses sees the burning bush and he talks to God. He said, Moses, uh, I've decided to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. And Moses said, yeah, that's great, God. And then God says to Moses, okay, now Moses, now you go tell Pharaoh what I said. Yeah. It's the same with us. God says, you know, the workplace you're working at, God said, I'm giving it to you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you tell that to my boss. You, you tell that to the CEO of the company. God says to Philadelphia, delivers tabernacle, I've given you the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. Does the mayor even know we exist? None of the revenue has ever come in out to our mailbox. Amen. No one has ever paid taxes to the Philadelphia Deliverance Tabernacle. Jesus. But God says, I've given you the city. Yes, Lord. 
It's a daunting task when you think about it in that respect. It's the same with the children of Israel. I've given you all this land. To, and and a, a pastor friend of mine, he said, you know, so many Christians walk around with their thrones on their back declaring how much authority they have. They have a pin on their chest saying, I'm, I'm the mayor of Beantown. I'm the mayor of the city of brotherly love. But he said, it's time for you to sit down your throne somewhere and subdue the land. You can talk about authority all you want. Those children of Israel can say all they wanted that, you know, the land of Canaan is ours. But it's time to do something about it. Yes, yes. Verse 5. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Glory. Verse 5 says, I'll read it again. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. That should encourage you a little bit. God, this task is just way too ridiculously huge. I don't even know what I would do with the city of Philadelphia. I don't know anything about city management, urban development. I don't know anything about city planning, how to run a city. I don't know anything about it. But what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? You'll go where God told you to go. You'll do what God told you to do. If God told you to stand uh, in the center of City Hall and preach the gospel, you'll go and do it. If God tells you to go and then stand in Broad Street and preach the gospel, then you'll do it. If God tells you to ride on the subway and preach the gospel, then you'll go and do it. If you knew, you cannot fail. Yeah. Amen. Our faith has some growing to do. Now, God is not going to ask all of us to do those things. He might ask some of us to do those things. But God said, I want you to prepare in your mind that you're willing. God, whatever it is you ask me to do, help me to get to the place that I'm willing to do it when and where you ask me to. Yes, yes. Because we can give this word back to God. Said, God, you said no man will be able to stand before me. No man shall be able to stand before me. It's time for us to stand up and say, I want this neighborhood. I want crime to stop in this neighborhood. I don't want it to go down. I told you last week, I didn't look it up this week, but as of last week, crime was down 17% in the city. Well, that means there's 83% of crime still going on. God, I want it to stop in this, this, this neighborhood. I want it to stop in this zip code zone. I want it to stop around my house. I want it to stop around, uh, why should there be crime around the ecclesias? The ecclesias are the governing body. They should be dictating what happens. And the problem is, we don't believe this. We have not integrated this word of God into our DNA. And listen, I'm not preaching to you today. I'm preaching to me. Jesus. I'm just sharing it with you. I'm allowing you to listen in on the sermon that I'm preaching to myself. God has given us a territory. God has given us authority. Now what are we going to do about it? Jesus. Time to take the territory. Yes. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And then I think about verses 6 through 9. As I told you, Joshua was the general of the army. Yes, yes. It was really kind of Aaron who was second in command. Mm -hmm. Because remember that battle? I should have looked it up. But that, that great battle, Joshua was taking the army in and they were fighting. And Moses was sitting on the hill looking over at the battle. And he was praying with his hands, his arms raised. Yeah. And when his arms got tired and his, he put his arms down, they began to be defeated in the battle. The enemy started gaining uh, the victory. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, along comes Aaron and lifts up one arm. And her comes up the other side and lifts up the other arm. And we, we sing praise to Aaron and her. Wow, weren't they great and mighty arms? armor bearers. They lifted up the arms but the real armor bearer was down in the valley. Joshua, he was swinging a sword from right to left. He was drawing blood. He was cutting off limbs. He was doing the heavy lifting. He was doing the hard work. Man. Joshua, this mighty man, this brave man was down there to get in the face of the enemy. God had to say to him, be of good courage, Joshua. 
How many of you know there's a thin line between fear and faith? Oh, yes. And, and oftentimes we'll jump back and forth. We'll get a word from the Lord and we'll know it's a word from the Lord. We get excited. We get full of faith. And then all of a sudden the devil slaps us across the face. Whoa. I don't know if that was God's word or not. Is that my crazy mind? Let me sit down and shut up. God tells you to, the, the, to participate, jump up in the service, and read this scripture, share that testimony, and then you do it, and then someone say, why did you prolong the service? You know the buffet uh, only charges for lunch until 2 o'clock, and after that we have to pay the full dinner price, but because you testified, and then you know, oh, maybe God didn't tell me. Well, maybe he did. Maybe he was telling another the person they didn't need to get the, <laughs> to the buffet. So often when we think we hear the voice of God and then the devil will immediately attack us because he doesn't want that plant, that, that seed to take root in your heart. No, I did what God told me to do. I don't care what it looked like on the surface. Yeah, Only time will tell the, the, the fruit that will grow from that seed that I planted because I was obedient. Yeah. Wow. I heard Joel Olstein say uh, after his father was sick and in the hospital, and his father called him and told him, you need to preach. He said, I've never been on that side of the camera. I ran the things from behind the yeah. scenes. I've never preached a public sermon before. Yeah. And now before millions of television audience and, and tens of thousands in the, the church audience, Joel Olsen preached uh, his first sermon. Mm -hmm. And he said, as he was leaving, the devil began to beat him up. And he said, no, no, devil, I did the best job I could do. Yeah. And God's going to take that, how, whatever I did, whatever I said, he's going to take it, turn around, and work it for the good. God will take those things that seem don't seem so pretty, so beautiful, so polished, and he'll make it work for the good. Yes. And he said he's had that attitude ever since. He said, no matter how awful it may have seemed to those sitting in the audience and, and to the religious folks and, and, and to the unchurched folks, he said, I, I just say, God, I did what you told me to do. I stood where I was told to stand, and I said what you told me to say. I might not have said everything perfectly or right. I not, might not have crossed every T or dotted every I, but I did what you told me to do. So, devil, take that. God is going to do something with it. Hallelujah. 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 So you see, verses 6 through 9, God is just constantly encouraging, encouraging Joshua, the brave army general. Now he's with this daunting task. You know, sometimes it's easier to fight with your fist yeah, yeah. than to stand still and see the glory of God. So I, I, and I can imagine Joshua. Yeah, I, I can slice him down with my sword, but God, to stand back and let you work, let you fight, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> and so God was encouraging, be courageous. He said, just keep repeating my word. Meditate on my word. What does it say in verse, I believe it's verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it night and day, day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written in it. Three things he said, it shall not depart out of your mouth, and then you shall meditate. Number two, you shall always be thinking about it. And number three, then you should do it. Mm -hmm. Do what God has instructed you to do. Yeah, Turn with me to 1 yeah. Samuel chapter 30. While you're turning to 1 Samuel 30, uh, I, I had a very recent testimony of when you go to do what God tells you to do and the devil slaps you back and you're wondering if you should be doing it. And I really believe that God is saying that in this day and time, he wants us to march forward, go forth. We just had a, a seminar or a meeting the other day, National Day of Prayer, met here. Uh, and I was talking to the speaker afterward. He said, you know, God has really been telling me this is the time for the church to advance. Mm -hmm. He said, just to, to go forward. I said, well, do you know what day it is? The meeting was on the Saturday before last, a week ago yesterday. He said, uh, no. I said, it's March 4th, and you're feeling that God is telling you you should advance, and you're teaching this meeting on March 4th. Yeah, yeah man, I know it's March 4th. Well, 
No, it means March 4th. I think God has had this meeting. Somehow he orchestrates things to make it work like that. You're telling us that we should go forth and it's March 4th. God is saying in this time, I'm giving you your marching orders. All the, the years you've heard the promise and you wondered how long, God, how long? God has said, now is the time to march forth. Now is the time. Here's your marching orders. Yeah, don't look for someone else to save you. Don't look for a savior to come. He's already come and he lives in your heart. He's sitting on the throne with you, but you have to be there with him. He's telling you to march forth, go, and your sons and your daughters shall be saved. I don't see why they can't be saved this year. Your neighbors can be saved. Start believing it. Start declaring it. This is my, my house is here. Uh, God has divinely orchestrated that somehow I live where I live. And so this is my territory. I share a wall with my neighbor. That's my territory too. They need to be saved. God, I'm a dispenser of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, the son of man, you shall see the angels ascending and descending. And I remind us that. I have to remind myself that constantly. You know, I am a son of man. My father's a man and I'm his son, so that makes me a son of man. And so the angels can ascend and descend. So whenever I want something, I need something from the Lord, I know the will of the Lord. I said, Lord, I need this. And so the angel runs up and says, God, we, he wants this. He's got to have it. And he comes back down with the answer, the solution. Whatever amount of angels he needs to help him accomplish the, the mission, I, I keep re reminding, and I've been reminding folks recently in, in, in Isaiah chapter 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me too. And there's several things he's anointed us to do. He's anointed us to preach. To bind up the broken hearted, uh, to loose the captives and the prisoners, to, 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 to set at liberty them that are bound, to, to open the blinded eyes. But then he said, if you do those things, if you do those things, and then it says down later in a verse or two later, it says, then they will rebuild the waste places. They will rebuild the desolate cities. They will build the places of destruction. Your job is to preach. Your job is to declare. Your, your job is to encourage and uplift. And they'll do the heavy lifting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. And it reads, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Uh, I've read this many times over the years, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized that God's response wasn't a mirror of David's question. Uh -huh. David's question had two components. Mm -hmm. You see, the story here was uh, David, who was uh, pursued by his king and his own nation, they wanted his life. They wanted him dead. And of course, David's enemies wanted him dead. Yeah. And, and here he, he, he gathers these few men around him and he forms a, a, a few mighty men that go out and harass the enemy of their home nation although their home nation doesn't want them and and now that while they're out an enemy of theirs comes in and takes all of their uh, belongings and burns their camp down so David comes back, his uh, home nation doesn't want him, the enemy wants to kill him, and now his own men, seeing this devastation on their uh, own property and their wives and their children taken away, yes. they want to kill David too. Yes, yes. And David said, I, Lord, I don't know what to do. So he said, well, yeah, I do know what to do. I need to go and inquire of the Lord. Yes. And this is what he, he's saying. He said, says to the Lord, Lord, shall I pursue this enemy that did this thing to us? Should I go and overtake them? What he was asking them, he said, should I go look for the people that did this? And should I put a whooping on them? That's what he asked them. You see, that's the thing about David. He said, although sometimes the answer seems obvious to us, what we should do, he always took the time to inquire of the Lord. That's why I thought it was amazing when Solomon took over after his father David. Solomon said to God, he said, I do not know how to come in and go out as my father David did. Yeah. David knew how to go into the Lord and inquire of the Lord, get an answer, and then go and do it. That's why David never lost a battle. Yeah. 
But Solomon starts out saying, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Well, Solomon, you're so wise. You need to learn how to do that quickly. Yeah. We, the people of God, need to learn how to go into God and stay there until we get an answer. We shouldn't be coming out just as confused, just as discouraged as when we go into prayer. Yes. Yes. Learn how to wait before the Lord until yes. the situation changes, until your heart is changed, so, until your mind is changed. But here's an amazing thing. God answered him and said, not only shall you pursue. Mm -hmm. Last week we learned about being in pursuit. He said, but you shall surely overtake them. He said, yeah, go ahead, pursue them. You'll find them and you'll put a whooping on them. But then he added something to it. And he said, and without fail, you shall recover all. David didn't even ask for recovery. He just wanted revenge. He's just asking, should, should I, can I go get revenge? And God said, yes, you can get revenge, and you will recover all that you lost. Now, if you jump down to verse 19, it says, and nothing of theirs was lacking. Either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. David did what God told him to do, and he recovered everything that was lost. But it didn't even stop there. Yeah. It went on into verse 20. And it says, Then David took all the flocks and the herds they had driven before those other livestock and said, This is David's spoil. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, this group that had uh, attacked David's camp and stolen all this stuff, they were just a group that would go around marauding. They were going around into different villages and places and stealing all their stuff. And they're just accumulating all, they were essentially a den of thieves. And David went and got all his stuff back. And then there was all this other stuff that wasn't his. He said, now the Lord said, this is David's spoil. This now all belongs to you. So not only what was taken from you shall be recovered. Some of you have lost, many of us have lost things in, 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 during the COVID season. We've lost time in our job. We've lost jobs. We've lost loved ones. But God said, I'm going to cause you to recover. You, you, you've lost the joy. You've lost the, 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 the will to go on, to fight on. But God said, I'm going to cause you to recover that will, that drive, that determination, that stamina. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to add some more to it. For all that you've lost, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. I've been saying that uh, since the entrance of 2022, God is going to give us double, but we have to do something. We have to never let his words depart out of our mouth. We never have to stop, quit. We never have to quit saying what God has said to us. We have to constantly rehearse his promises. We have to meditate on it night and day. It should be the last thing on our mind when we go to sleep at night and the first thing on our mind when we arise in the morning. This is what God promised me. And this is what I'm going to do. You see, David couldn't just sit there and wait for these bad guys to bring the stuff back to him. He had to pursue them. He had to get up off of his rusty dusty. They said they burned down his city and his whole city was ashes and he couldn't just sit there on his ash but he had to get up there and get back yes. what was taken from him. So I'm thinking about this last night and I'm thinking, wow, this is the time to spring forward. And so I'm here at the church and I climb up on my ladder to make sure the clock is right so that it will spring forward. And the next thing I know, I'm falling backwards off the ladder onto the floor. I said, isn't that just like the devil to show his hand and tell you the opposite of what God is telling you? Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm even more convinced more than ever before that it's not only, it is a time to spring for it. Although the devil, you said, saying it's time for you to fall back. It's time for you to dig a hole. It's time for you to hide. It's time for you to preserve what you have. It's time for you to buy some gold and buy some powdered water and hide it until uh, the, the term tribulation is over. Jesus. Don't buy power water, because when you get it home, you won't know what to add. I'm just saying. Know this, and I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Our enemy. Yeah, well, I'm laying on the floor, screaming in pain. My wife says, you should call overseer and have him speak tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to tag team. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
So I, I need you to pray for me so that I can straighten this arm out again. So it's going to happen. We're, yes, we're going to see victory. Yes, yes, I'm going to spring forward. This oh, arm is going to swing. Spring forward. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Our enemy, the devil, is relentless. Jesus. He is persistent in trying to keep you from what's yours. Yes. Whether it was earned or inherited, it's yours. Yes. Some things you, you earn, and it's easier to fight for those things. You know, you know, I work hard for this. Now, I put in 40 hours a week. I save my money to get this, whatever this is. Yes. I'm not going to let the devil take it. Right. Yes. I'm not going to let the... So sometimes that, that we have a natural inclination to preserve what we've worked hard for. But God says, I've promised you a whole lot more than that. Jesus. Don't let the devil steal that that I've promised from you. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. It's yours. These are your marching orders. Remember what I've promised you. Don't limit the solution to come from a specific place or a specific person or a specific direction. Sometimes we won't get what God has promised because it has to be this way and no other way. Amen. Jesus has to come down now in the flesh and tell me which way to go. Well, that probably won't happen. Don't get complacent. There were so many that there were... Even tribes of Judah, I forget if it was Ephraim or Manasseh, uh, Manasseh that said, you know what, we're just going to camp out on this side of the Jordan. We don't need yeah. to go on the promised land because they didn't want to fight. They didn't want to go hard after what God has promised them. Jesus. Sometimes what God has promised you to get it, it might cost a few tears. It might cost you something. Yeah. It might cost a temporary seem, seeming loss. To get what God has promised you, it might cost you not being able to retaliate or respond to some name, something someone called you. Yeah. It might cost you being kind, as we learned on Wednesday night, to someone who's mean to you. Yeah. Our flesh has no greater satisfaction than to retaliate when we've, we've been done wrong. Mm -hmm. Tit for tat, butter and fat. You kill my dog, I kill your cat. Jesus. I said that in church one day, and someone got so offended to me. They didn't come the next week, and they called me and told me, "You want to kill you? You want you want to kill my cat? Because I talked about killing my neighbor's dog, putting something in their food, and now you preaching about me killing, having them kill my no." Only the guilty flee when no man pursues. Anyway, I don't mean anything. I'm not talking about or thinking about anybody's dog or cat, butter or fat, tit or tat. Anyway, praise the Lord. Remember God's promises. What specifically has God promised you? Keep it on the forefront of your mind. Imagine what it looks like. If God promised you a new house, Begin to imagine what it looks like. Yeah. What color are the walls? How big is the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Does it have a bath and a shower? Does it have a shower curtain or sliding doors? Mm -hmm. Is the basement finished? Mm -hmm. Are there stairs? Begin to imagine what it looks like. Yes. Draw a picture of it. Put it on your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Keep it on the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. Imagine what it feels like. God promised you a brand new bed. Imagine what it feels like sleeping in that bed. I'm, I'm sure some of the, the, the members here are imagining that right now. But it feels like to sleep in your bed. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Bless you. <laughs> Lastly, remember the marching orders. Remember what God tells you. He says, I am with you. What did we say? Uh, uh, verse 5 said, he said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of yeah. our lives. So you got to ask yourself, am I alive? Well, that means no one's able to stop me from fulfilling what God has promised me. Mm -hmm. As long as I do my part. And all we have to do is follow the directions. Oh, yes. Yes. Follow the directions. Mm -hmm. You see, some people feel like Doing my part is to do everything I can think to do. No, that's not that's not doing your part. Mm -hmm. You know, Sarah had that idea. 
Mm. Oh, God promised Abraham a son. Let me do my part. I, I can't have a child myself. I can't make myself have a child. Let me find someone else who can have a child. No, that wasn't the plan of God. Follow his directions. Follow his directions. God said, Abraham will be the father of many. Sarah will be the mother of many nations. That was the plan of God. So you have to follow directions God's way. Yes, yes. Keep them on the forefront of your mind. Marching orders. God has got great things for us this year. This year. Mm -hmm. yes. Let us go forward. Let yes. us march. Yes. Let us march. Let us march into it. Yes. We will see it. Though we don't see it, we might not be able to see it or feel it right now. Though it might not yes. seem like it might seem like everything is to the contrary. Mm -hmm. God said, these are your marching orders. Yes. March forth. Yes. March forth. March forth. Yes. And accomplish everything that I've promised you. Take back what the enemy has stolen. Yes. Yes. Take back even what the enemy has threatened. Amen. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But if you're on the enemy side, meaning if you're not a child of God, yes, yes. you see, there's only two sides. Mm -hmm. There's God's side and the enemy side, the double side. People get offended by that, but I'm sorry I didn't make the rules. Mm -hmm. If you're not on God's side, you're on the enemy's side, so you can't take back from what the enemy stole because you're on his side. You see, God has a plan for your life. He said, I, my plan is to give you life and life more abundantly, but the devil's plan is, he said, mm -hmm. I've come to kill, to steal, and destroy you. It might seem pleasurable for a moment, for the night, for the day, but ultimately it will kill you. Yeah. It will destroy you. All you have to do is to come on the Lord's side is ask the Lord to come into your heart. It doesn't have to be some big elaborate ceremony. It doesn't have to be paying money. All it has to be is sincerity of the heart. That with the heart man believeth, but with the mouth confession is made. And you can do that right where you are. Yeah. You here in the sanctuary, or you watching later in your home, in your bedroom, or driving in your car. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. And that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Asking God to come into your heart, be the Lord of your life. That's all it takes to be a child of God. There's a whole lot of list of do's and don'ts that others add to it, but that's all it takes. It's a gift. It just takes you forgiving or asking or receiving. That's the word I want. Receiving the gift. But God wants to give you more because, see, the same way you can't save yourself, you can't keep yourself saved. You can't keep being saved. So one way to greatly assist you in being saved is to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Yes, 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 yes. And so as you're praying, just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You said if we, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more will the Father, which is in heaven, mm -hmm. give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? And while you're asking for the, being filled with the Holy Spirit, ask him to give your prayer language. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God says, and they spoke with other tongues yeah. They spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave utterance. Yeah. So what you have to do, you have to start using your vocal cords. Start praising the Lord. Glory and just Lord. imagine being filled with the Holy Spirit. Imagine, I don't know, if you want to imagine rain coming down or, or being filled up like a glass. How do you want to imagine being filled with the Holy Ghost or baptized in the Holy Ghost? And as you're praising the Lord and thanking God for filling you, then he'll take control of your tongues. Mm -hmm. And he'll begin to speak. And he'll begin to pray mysteries to God. And we don't understand it necessarily how it all works or how it happens. But God says that will edify you. It will build you up. It will strengthen you. It will accelerate your maturing process yeah, yeah. in this Christian walk. I want that. Glory. I want that. Any of you ever got a new job? You know, you start at entry level. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew a shortcut to become the manager Vice President, wouldn't it be nice? Well, God said, this is a shortcut, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. It helps you to 
lay aside, sanctify yourself from those things of the world that you, you, in your own strength, just can't lay aside. Holy Spirit will help you with those things. He'll help you with relationship. He'll give you wisdom. There's seven spirits in the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And all of these things will help you to be the man or the woman of God that God has called you to be. And then, once you've done that, you're in the family of God. He's got all kinds of promises to you, for you, to bless you, to cause you to live in abundance. And then you can receive, you're then a candidate to receive all of those things. He that comes to God must believe that he is first, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you for being with us. This is the hour of deliverance, and deliverance is taking the land. God bless you, and shalom. Until next time.